Today we are coming back to learn more about the Great Tribulation Armageddon. And today we are talking about what has happened before this. I'm not going to use them, go through the whole thing, but I'm going to go through them and put that in order so you can understand what's happening. But the sad part about all of this is people that are not saved. And that is why we are here to teach you what is happening already for to prepare for the Great Tribulation period because the Antichrist are everywhere, the Satanic powers are everywhere, and all apostasy not teaching the Word of God. So that's the reason we are doing this so you can see and know what blessings it is to know the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. So today I'm going to begin with one of my lessons that is very, very good because some people that are listening don't know how to receive Christ, don't know anything about the Word of God. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. You see, we have to read the Word of God to obey the Word of God. And this is lacking today in every area of the lives of these wor this whole world. So, and this is for doctrine. That is, tells us what is right. We cannot live like the world and please God. And for reproof, tells us what is not right. We have to obey the word of God to receive the blessings that he has for us. And everything that's in this book is his blessings that we receive after we become a child of God. And this is for correction, tells us how to get right. And this is so wonderful because I have a good excuse. I have given out the word of God for over 40 years each week of my life. And I have to study the Word of God each week. And I have lived this book. And He has given me a perfect life because He's taught me the Word of God. And once you know, for instruction in righteousness tells us how to keep right, that's what the Word of God is for. And I'm going to give you some lessons on this so you can understand and teach. 1 Corinthians 12, 13. I'm going to give that to you after I have my prayer. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. That's how we are to live. That's what this is for. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. So we can see and know 1 Corinthians 12, 13. Now listen before I pray. For by one spirit are we all. This is every person. For the body is not one member, but many. 1 Corinthians 12, 14. He's the head and we're the body. And then he says in 1 John 4, 13. Hereby know we that he, we dwell in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. You have to be born again. You have to know this is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Unless you know the Holy Spirit and in you, then you cannot learn the word of God because it says in John 4, 23, but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship. That's why we pray the Word of God. That's the only way that we can have the blessings that He has for us. That's why this scripture is the most important, and I'm giving you really good questions and answers to what he wants for us, and 
that is the very, very best. Nothing else but the best. Our inheritance. And we are saints of light. And this is how we're to live, like saints. Let's pray. Oh, our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we thank Thee and praise Thee this day for the blessings of knowing Thee and for the truth that Thou hast given to us in this book. So today we're coming to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and to find grace to help in time of need. And we have not because we ask not. Ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. And every person that's listening right now can receive the Lord Jesus Christ by believing for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have eternal life. And this is what I'm giving this out today for and these last few weeks and the next few weeks teaching how every person can know they are born again by the Spirit of God and to accept the gift of eternal life and to be brought out of darkness into light out of the power of Satan unto God. And we don't want anybody to go to an eternal hell because God did not make that for people. He made that for the devil and his angels. Thank thee for 100 fold. I pray for 100 fold every day that every person, and this is a confidence we have if we ask anything according to his will, we know he hears and we shall have the petitions that we require of him. And every person that's listening right now can receive this gift, the gift of eternal life. And that's how I pray every day for all of those people that are lost. Thank thee for hearing and answering our prayers today. In Christ's name we pray, amen. So today as we come to these lessons, we want to give you some Bible verses that you can write down and study them every day. You have to study the Word of God every day. It's just like your food. If you don't eat food every day, what happens? That's what's happening to all the people that are truly born again, but they're missing out on all the blessings that God gives to us. And then he says in 2 Corinthians 1, 22, who hath also sealed us and given us the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Now for those of you that have been listening to this, this is what happened with chapter 6 and chapter 4 of the book of Revelation. We're raptured to be with the Lord. We saw you, you've seen that and you know that's where we go. It has to happen before the seven year tribulation period because we're not here during that time because all the people that are left, they are killing them as you have heard these lessons. And I have to repeat them because they're so important. So in chapter 6, we see what he, the, that is the first, fifth, and sixth seals, the chapter six. Chapter seven is when they give the 144,000, this is chapter seven, verse three, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. You see, we are sealed. Nothing can touch us. That's what happened with the 144,000 because in chapter 7 now, I'm giving this over because you have to hear these twice to understand and study them. And then in verse 9, And this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all, this is amazing, of all these nations, this is, and tongues, this is so amazing, and this is blessings from people all over the world, and before these, and return to the Lord before the Lamb, 
they are clothed with white robes and hands <laughs> in their hands. You see, they are the white robes always speak of Christ. They're in the light of him now. They are not doing what the other people did because when they started to kill them, they would not worship the beast. Now that's why I'm giving this to you. And cried with a loud voice saying, in one our God, this is which, this is so amazing, upon the throne sat unto the Lord in heaven. These people had not received Christ, but they had to be killed or they couldn't go to heaven. They kill them because of other people that's on the earth. So they ask, one of the elders asked, where did these people come from? Now this is verse 14, you have to understand. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of the great tribulation. So you can understand what happened. And then we've already heard in chapter 14 how the people, they had all 144,000. They are serving God for seven years, but they can't touch him. That's how nobody can touch us. If we stay faithful to the word of God, we are sealed just like they were. And I want you to understand that. And we've, we're going to study this in a little while, but not right now. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city. Because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. You see, you can't do like the world and please God. And that's what he says with these. He says, these are they which were not defiled with women, but they were virgins. Everybody's to be a virgin. There's no other way. So here we're seeing now, and then in chapter 14, then, this is the most amazing thing, and the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast and his image and receive the mark of him in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. You see, we have to know the Word of God. And when we do, we won't sin. And if we do make a mistake and sin, He never remembers our sin no more because we, we turn from that sin. And then he says in verse 17, we have to understand all of these truths because there's nothing else in this book. And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image and whatsoever receiveth whosoever receiveth the mark. Now that's why I have to give you these. You have to understand that this is what happens to everybody that will not refuse sin. And that's what we are to live today. So as we give to the rest of these, we have to understand what he is doing for us. And then we see with these lessons, you have to obey the word of God. And this is John 4, 24, I gave you John 23 before, and this is what you have to understand about the, the seal. But the hour cometh and now is when true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. You have to have the word of God. The Father, the 
the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. And then in verse 24, it goes together. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Hebrews 9, 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot by his own blood, he went to the cross and died for us, that we have his pure blood, and we are to honor that blood. He's in us. That's the only way you can be saved. By his own blood, Christ entered into once into the holy place, and here we have, in Christ, we have redemption through his blood. You see, once we know the word of God, our lives change thinking of all that he's done for us. So we're going to now read some of chapter 9. We did the first part, and now today, and thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire, and of japhon, and brimstone, and the heads of the horses, now listen to this, were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. This is what the seven-year tribulation is doing to those that are, tra that are serving God, wanting to live for the Lord. And then, listen what he says, but for their power is in their mouth and in their, this is amazing, tails, for their tails were the unmeasurable and had heads and with them they do hurt. All they do is to give them things that are bringing pain to them and not according to the word of God. None of these that they are doing now, this is what happens. And now in chapter 11, that I just went over those that I gave you before, and there was given me a reed like a rod, and the angel stood saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar, and them that worship therein. And in chapter 11, verse 2, But the court which is without the temple, leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread under for the forty-two months. That's how they're treating them, forty-two months. For I will give give power unto my two witnesses. Now these are two witnesses, prophets, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. This is what they're going through right now. Every person is starting to see the evil that is in the world and wanting the children to sin rather than to love them and show how great God is. And this is chapter 11, verse 4. For these are the two, this is, olive trees and the two candles standing before the God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth them, their enemies, and if any man will hurt them, he must in the same manner be killed. You see, that's all they're thinking about, killing the people that will not worship the beast. And in verse 6, these have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood. They turn the water to blood. They have earthquakes and everything. And this, and waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all, 
with all this is as often as they will. Every person, they just do it, two of these. And then he says, and when they shall have finished his testimony, the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit, the bottomless pit that comes out of there, shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. You see how time is going to happen? And we have to be raptured to be with the Lord, and we will not be here. The tribulation has no power over anything as you're a child of God, and this is the best thing. And when they shall, this is, uh, this is still in verse chapter 11, verse 11, verse 7, and when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. They killed the prophets. You see, this is a terrible thing. And I want to talk to every person that's listening. As a family, we as parents are saved. The children are not. Sometimes the children are saved and the parents aren't. So we have to obey the word of God to have when we go to heaven, which I'm ready for heaven, I've been ready for heaven for, my daughter says, I say I've been ready for 30 years, but listen, it's been longer than that. And your children will never be with you or you'll never see them again. This is something to think about because my heart has been aching more than ever before since I have done, I taught this years ago but it is going to happen soon. So we have to understand and that the dead bodies, now listen to what they did, shall lie in the dust of the great dust where in, which enemies is called, where enemies are called to Sodom and Egypt, then when our Lord was where our Lord was crucified. And they of the people and the hundreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies. Here is what they did. Their bodies lying in the dust and they shall suffer, not suffer them to bury them in the graves. They're leaving them out so they can see them. And this is the saddest thing. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send them. And this is amazing. One to another here because thou, those two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. And they were tormenting the prophecies. You see how the lies are just as bad. And this is something we must understand that we have to love. You cannot hate anybody. If you hate somebody, you are a murderer. And we are, he that loveth not knoweth not God. So here, and they heard a great voice from heaven. Now listen to this saving them, come, saying to them, come up hither. And they ascended up in heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. You see, this is something that every person can understand, and even a child. And we have so many days and so much time to serve the Lord. He says, and I want to give this to thee, I'm praising, giving this before I get this is my prayers daily. Mark 16, 15. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. 
I've set before thee, Revelation 3, 8, I've set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. Matthew 19, 29, that we shall receive an hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. I pray for a hundredfold every day. And this is his will. It's not his will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And this is the confidence I have. If I ask anything according to his will, I know he hears, and I shall have the petition I require of thee. And those of you that know me that's on YouTube, I pray for a hundredfold of every person that hears these, and God will answer my prayers. That's a reason I'm here for you. And he says in Matthew 13, 8 and 23, he will bring forth fruit 100-fold. And then he says in Luke 18, 16, now this is the hardest thing for me because I love the children. I've taught junior church 25 years and I love every person. I love every person just like God does. I pray for those that are in darkness and don't have any light. And that is a hundredfold. And then he says, and it, this brings tears to my eyes, suffer the little children that come unto thee, unto me, and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of God. I'm praying for all of you children now. And you can pray for me and you'll be rewarded. All of you that's listening. And then Philippians 1, 6, being confident of this very thing. He which hath begun a good work in you will perform it till the day of Jesus Christ. And then he says, herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. So this is what I'm giving to you today. And we're going to have another lesson next week. And I want you to study the book of Revelation beginning in chapter 6 is where it begins. And you can see what God is going to do. And the greatest blessings are here for us. And all the people that need to know the Word of God, it's right here in this book. And he says in chapter 21, listen at this, in verse 7, He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. We are sons of God. We're heirs of God. But look what happens to those in chapter 21, verse 8. But the fearful and unbelievers and the abominable and the murderers and the whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. You see why I'm here? I'm here because God gave us his son, and his son gave himself for our blood and for our life, eternal life. So I'm praying that you will study these lessons and obey the word of God, and I will see you in heaven. Nothing else in this world that is eternal. And every promise in this book is eternal, and it's for us after you become a child of God. Thank you for hearing today. I love you, and I pray that you will get on your knees like I do and pray and he will answer your prayers. Receive the gift of eternal life today.